Hello everyone, this is Damien. This is going to be episode number 16 of uh, Beginner's Java. So today we're going to be reviewing everything that we've sort of talked about up until lesson 16, which is everything before we get into objects. So we're going to be talking everything back through. If you feel very comfortable with what we've learned, you can probably skip this lesson. So we're going to start off at the very beginning. We're going to start off with just a system.out.println and say hello world. That's all fine and dandy. So let's take it a step further and say string str1 equals and we'll set it equal to the number 1, 2, 3, 4. So from there, say we want to change 1, 2, 3, 4 into a, uh, a normal bit of uh, a number. So let's say I wanted to set int i equal to uh, integer dot parse int string 1. I would do it just like that. So then I could say system dot out dot println and say the integer value of str1 equals plus i. Do something like that. We should be able to give that a run and have it just pop out like that. So that's kind of what we were looking to have happen. Um, that's from the episode where we went over wrapper classes. Uh, those are particularly useful when we get into um, uh, actual real life sort of coding because there will be a lot of times you'll get something and you have no control over sort of what data type it is and you're just expected oh well handle it and so it's kind of good practice um let's see what else do we did we cover uh methods so let's assume we wanted to create a method uh, the method has to be inside of our class but outside of our main um, alternatively it can be in another file if we want so, for the sake of time, I'm not going to make another file, but I will make public uh, static void add numbers, and I'll take in int a as well as int b. By the way, I'm not being very creative with my variable names today. I hope you guys will pardon me on that one. And since we want to add those numbers, um, I suppose I'll do system.out.println the sum of a, or well, let's do it like this, of, and then do plus a, plus quote, plus, plus b, plus quote, equals, and then do plus a plus b. Look at all that. That is an ugly string. So now we'll call that and we'll say add numbers 17 comma 4. So that'll pass these off to the constructor up here. 17 will be set to A, 4 will be set to B. We give that a run and it spits out like that. So that's all that sort of formatting was for right there. And so it would print out like that. Um, Let's see, what else have we covered in these past videos? We've covered um, loops, haven't we? So let's talk a bit about loops and conditional statements as well. So let's do something like this. Let's do um, if i is less than 1,000, we'll do add numbers that way. Otherwise, we'll do it differently. And so we'll say add numbers 25 comma 5. And so this way, the else, since int i is set to 1, 2, 3, 4, it actually won't hit this now. And it will hit our else statement. And it will go to add numbers like that. So, okay. Now, real quick, let's talk about uh, two other things. I, I do want to make this a quick video for you guys. I feel like the last few have been really long 
and the next one is actually very long as well. Um, so we have uh, for loops. I tend to stay away from whiles. Um, a lot of people like them. I don't. So we're going to say for int i equals zero. i is less than ten. i plus plus. And we'll do i plus. Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted. System dot out dot println i plus quote dot okay and I have way too many parentheses on that here we go right no ah wait that can't be I because I already used I there we go and J and that there we go okay so, um, should have hit that, right? Hmm, it's kind of strange, isn't it, that it didn't hit this at all? Because the add number should have. Uh, hmm. Oh, bah, I forgot to change my middle variable there from i to j. And apparently I didn't type hello world, right? So we now have ten hell worlds. That's good. But that's your, your basis of a for loop. Uh, just be weary that there are cases where you can make it so uh, a for loop will never end. So, for example, let's do greater than and set that to minus minus instead. We give that a run, and actually that will never hit. Um, so let's do is less than 10. So that stays the same, and you'll see that this is not going quite how we wanted it to. Um, well, actually it is, because I wanted to demonstrate a an endless loop, and it certainly is endless. That'll run until we get uh, a stack overflow or some kind of a, a maxint exception. Um, either or. I stopped it manually though. So I think that that's about all. Um, I suppose we can do arrays real quick, but those were pretty basic. Um, the last sort of thing I want to talk about is using the debugger uh, sort of for what it's worth. Um, so let's say that I were to remove a semicolon or something all willy-nilly and it, it won't let me compile. Uh, it, it won't. It'll yell at me. It'll say there's problems. I say proceed anyways. And if I do, it'll tell me that there's an exception in main. It'll tell me which line it's on and which file it's in. If I click on that, it'll highlight where it is. And then it will tell me, you know, syntax error. Insert semicolon a complete block statement. So this is considered a block statement, meaning it's a line of code. And I need a semicolon at the end of that line of code to complete it, or else it's not going to be happy. And there's about a million different things that you can do to trigger these. These can be going from, like, dropping uh, your, your scoping brackets at the end of uh, your class and the end of your main. These can be having too many or too few scoping brackets. So a good thing to note is at any given time, if you feel like, you know, say, say you're you get all messed up where your stuff is all indented wrong and you get kind of weird with how things are indented and stuff just doesn't look right. You can always highlight it, go up to source, and go to uh, correct indentation or format. Correct indentation only 
corrects indentation. I suggest using format because it does the whole file and sort of brings it to where I like it to be. The only sort of thing I don't like is how they do the else on the same line as the closing of if. Some people like that. I don't, but I live with it if I do it that way. Uh, it does save a line of code or two. So, um, With that said, I think that this will sort of do for now. I just wanted to make sure that everybody had a firm grasp on what we'd covered before going forward. If you do have any additional questions, please post them on this video before going forward. It's going to be very difficult to sort of keep uh, all this past material straight going forward into objects. Uh, objects are sort of a whole new way of thinking about uh, variables and and how data is stored inside of programs. So I hope you guys will join me for that. My name is Damien and I hope you have a great evening.